Oh, 100% right. Oh, goodness gracious me. That oh, couldn't have been further from the truth. Accompanying flutes. That means we're seeing some oh, control dang. action. I didn't say that three of them are in the prize cards. So here we go. Stefan Ivanov versus Leon. There's the fist bump. Was it a snorl actually? No, oh, it was the cornerstone. Ogapon. Right now, we're going to have to take some time to explain what's going to go on here. So. Uh, I tell you, since you played this, well, we're not even sure if it is Palkia, actually. No, it is Palkia. We oh, saw it, it in the prizes. Oh, it is Palkia? Well. Okay. So what you, you talk to us about the Palkia deck, Paris? Absolutely. So the idea of the Palkia deck is it combines Palkia as an attacker, but also with the V-star ability, accelerates free energies from your discard pile onto any water Pokemon. That's very important. This basically allows you to early on discard water energies and then use that star portal to get those water energies either on your... Palkia, you might have a second one on the bench that you can also start attaching energies to. You also have that uh, Greninja Yex, which, watch out, is a fighting type Pokemon yeah. once evolved. So you need to make sure that the Froakie we see on the screen right now, that you would use Star Portal onto that Froakie. So now, these are your main attackers, the Greninja, the Palkia. You also have the Radiant Greninja as another attacker. However, I think in this particular matchup, it might not be as useful. We'll see how that plays out. Um, but yeah, the idea is accelerate energy from your discard pile, set up your attackers, and then go into, like, you want to fill up your bench to do more damage with that Palkia V-Star as well. So these are the general ideas. Discard your energies, use your V-Star power, and then get those attacks off. Worth noting, against the controlled archetype, which we will go into detail a little bit more in a second, that Greninja EX could be really helpful. That Shinobi Blade doing 170 damage, great number, but it lets you grab any card you like from your deck. So whatever answers Stefan will need, he will be able to get. As we do see Squawk and Seize, going to get rid of the A spec there. I think it was a Prime Catcher and the Blood Moon Ursa Luna. So Squawk and Seize, Stefan's going to discard his hand to draw six. So we see Dust, no Dust Skull in the hand, we see a Nest Ball. So yeah, it's going to be a really interesting game, actually. Not a matchup before about can too you, often, to be honest with you. Yeah, can you can you talk to me a little bit about the strategy of that control yeah. deck? Okay, so Leon, this is what I like to call an alternate win condition deck. You know, the, there are other ways to win in Pokemon. It's not just taking prizes or benching out your opponent. You can win if your opponent starts the turn and they haven't got a card to draw. Uh, Stefan does play that Nest Ball. Looks like it's going to grab a Radiant Ninja. So what Leon is going to opt to do, not really take prize cards. He's going to try and run Stefan's deck out of resources. How is he going to do that, though? Because you can't just sit there and absorb damage all day. Well, we can see the Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pod in the active. That cannot, uh, that cannot take damage from Pokemon that have an ability. So Radio Greninja cannot target it via Moonlight Shuriken. As we do see a Buddy Buddy Puffin being played there for Stefan. And we see concealed cards there as well. So that's one way. So if Stefan was to only have Pokemon played out of ability, kill uh, Cornerstone Ogre Pod, could just sit there and win. However, Leon has a few other things he can do. Mimic you has safeguard, means it cannot take damage from EX Pokemon or V Pokemon. And then we also have the big bad Snorlax from Pokemon Go. Now this is interesting. This has the block ability. So while it's in the active, your opponent's active cannot retreat. So let's say you was to lock in, let's say a Luminion V, right? A Pokemon that isn't really going to attack. You could leave Snorlax in the active, lock in a Luminion, and just keep announcing pass, and your opponent can't do anything about it. So that's what Leon's going to opt to do. Make life awkward for Stefan, as we do see a pay retreat into the Froki and pass with free Duskull. Now, I think the Duskull's going to be really interesting, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Let's see what Leon can do. Now, the weaknesses of these control decks are they traditionally can't draw a lot of cards. The only way they can do that is via the Rotom V, which lets you end the turn, instant charge, and then you can draw three cards to end your turn. So let's we're going to see the Nest Ball here from Leon debating on what to grab and do a little price check search as well. Yeah, we talked about that block ability from the Snorlax. It can uh, gust up one of the support Pokemon and just block them in the active spot. One interesting aspect here is that Stefan was like, before you get any of those Snorlax out, I want to get my Squawk ability off the active position. Yes. And typically, you would want, you would see players keeping their main attackers or attackers that they want to set up eventually on the bench to keep them safe. However, against the control deck, you're not risking, any, you're not expecting any attacks. So you can easily put that Froki um, in the active position yeah. and then you have some time eventually to evolve. Um, I think the control aspect here is also interesting because, of course, um, looking at the list or from previous events, we know that the only way to get that Greninja EX into play is by playing an. Um, rare candy yes so now there's supporters that would discard potential items yeah. from stefan's hand and there's also uh, supporters that would discard uh, items off his deck 
Yep. So the quest for Stefan will be to find, eventually find that rare candy and evolve that before the disruption Ooh, gets Oh, speak big. of that supporter, there's an Eri. Is that going to get guard two items from your opponent? Oh, goodness, but that is a miss. So Eri going to do a whole lot of nothing. But then Stefan's hand isn't really the greatest. We are going to see a Snorlax going to get benched. Rotom V, instant charge, draw three cards over to Stefan. I imagine if you top that rare candy, wouldn't you love to see that? But we are going to see conceal cards, draw two, one, two. Irid, a rare candy would be amazing. Oh. Not no quite. Rare candy. Um, one interesting part is that you might be thinking, hey. And a pass. And a pass. Yeah, I mean, you have a lot of time against it. Yeah, that's true. Decks, that is right? true. Uh, eventually, you might draw into that poker stop as well, which allows you to potentially get that rare candy that you need. You already have one piece in the Greninja in hand, so we're only waiting at this point uh, for that rare candy to be pulled. On top of that, you see those three, I mean, one evolved now, um, but you see those three psychic Pokemon on the bench as well. They have the one big advantage that if you were to gust them in the active yeah. Position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can always use their ability, yes, allow your opponent to take a prize, but get out of that active position. So they will never be locked in. And on top of that, they will help to get those damage numbers up to KO the Pokemon. Yeah, but worth noting, the, these control decks, they only get stronger as the game goes on. Because they want to try and develop like a penny loop, they can heal and all that jazz. If you can, oh, Miss Fortune says, look at the top five cards of your deck, opponent's deck, discard any items. We see a nice stretcher so far, just a nice stretcher. And the rest are going to get shuffled in. Not the greatest of hits there, but, you know, we'll take it. Yeah, so two times in a row, not the greatest hits. And this just plays into Stefan's slow start, but he hasn't really lost any resources yep. beyond. And we talked a little bit about Snorlax's ability with the block. You wouldn't want to have some pivoting options to yeah. get out of that lock position, right? And um, we have seen that the, I think it was the prime catcher. Yeah, that's been discarded hitting, already. Yeah, yeah. Hitting, hitting the discard pile very early on. So this is one less tool for Stefan to get out of a tricky situation should he find himself locked up with one Pokemon. There might be other options here. There might be a switch potentially. Display two copies of switch. We're going to see um, instant charge being used there. Concealed card there from Stefan. going to draw two cards. Uh, oh, there's the switch, sorry. And an iron O. Not quite there, going to attach an energy, can't attack with that because it hasn't got an ability. So uh, we are going to see the iron. Okay, this yeah. is interesting because the control decks really like to build up their hand over time of instant charge so they can pluck out what they need, um, well, whenever they want it. If you can reset your opponent's hand, they can get in trouble. Absolutely, and Iona is also a great tool because we saw, um, I mean, there's a rare candy, but now we're missing yeah. the Greninja. One thing I want to say about the Iona is the cards are going to the bottom of the deck. Oh, that's a triple hitter off the pokey stop. Not the item you realistically want, but you know, we'll take them. Yeah, but now your hand is stacking up with items that with another yeah, enemy could be discarded as well, especially rare candies. I think I saw two in his hand. Yes. So if that's another two, and uh, I mean, let's check the prizes there. There's no rare candy in the prize we saw that at the beginning of the game. Um, but yeah, you need your rare candy eventually. If you run out of them, if they get Aerith and Miss uh, Fortune Sisters, then it's going to be rough. But I would have loved to see more pieces get, getting Iono to the bottom of the deck because the safest position to be in as an item against the control deck is at the bottom of the deck. Yes, that is true. So it looks like we're going to see the Froakie attack. I think, is it try bouncing? It's 30 damage if you hit a hats. Hey, let's go, Froakie! Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Love to see that. Try bouncing from Froakie. Okay, over to Leon now. Let's see. Arvin in hand. Uh, Misfortune and Sisters in hand, being eyed up. Nest Ball in hand as well. But you're perfectly right. Leon doesn't isn't under any massive pressure, right? Leon always wants the game to go long, so it doesn't really have to do anything too crazy. Here we do see Nest Ball being played. It's like eyeing up the Snorlax, and it's interesting. Now eyeing up the Snorlax, that definitely means Leon's going to opt to use that a lot in this match. It's a shame that Stefan did have to leave that Squawker Billy because you're right, the Dust Clops and the Dust Skulls, that's fine. You bring them in the active, they can just curse bomb out of there. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, Squawker Billy can't do that, <laughs> so we need to try and leave that away. However, keep in mind that uh, these decks typically run one um, Dust Clops. Um, True. So once that Dust Club, I mean, oh, true. Yeah. you also need your rare candies to go into Dust Nor, right? Yeah, so true. if Dust Clops is on the bench, can't be used or, I mean, can't be gained back. So it might be possible to lock one of the Shepherds in the active position. On the other hand, you might be thinking, hey, Stefan is looking for that Greninja EX, right? Here we go, Misfortune Sisters, though. There's a Nest Ball at the very least. And an Ultra Ball. Oh, that Ultra was actually huge. That would have found a Greninja EX. That's been sent straight to the discard pile. Misfortune Sisters starting to have its way on the game. And this is the thing, right? These disruption supporters, 
as the game goes on, the more likely they are to hit, as we do see an attach retreat. Oh, and that means that throw key is now blocked in the active, won't be able to manoeuvre around. Yeah, but keep in mind, like, you may be thinking Stefan is setting up his Greninja EX in his case, hopefully at some point. And why is there no uh, no Mimikyu hitting the field, which would block that attacks? But we already have a Dust Club on the field, yes, and yeah, yeah. they would just pick up those KOs left, right, and center. So it's not really an answer to the stack uh, getting going into your uh, Mimikyu's. Um, and yeah, being blocked as a Froak is no problem either. Keep in mind, as a fighting type, you will hit those Snorlax for yep. super effective damage. So Great even point. even if they were to attach any Bravery Charms or any other um, tools, that would not prevent you from being KO'd. Pokey stop. Oh, and there goes the dust one. Now, worth noting, I believe, yeah, just play four copies of Night Stretcher. So Pokemon in the discard pile isn't the worst place to be, but, you yes. know, not also ideal. Now, it looks like we're eyeing up an Ultra Ball. We know where Khan is in hand, so we could at the very least, perhaps, see the Shino, uh, see the Greninja EX come down. Irida's going to search first. Okay, letting you grab a water-type Pokemon and an item. Let's see what this grabs. Yeah, keep in mind that uh, Greninja evolves from a water Pokemon, but is not be searchable yes. by Irida itself here. So we might, I mean, you can pick up one of those Palkias into your hand, so it's just like off your deck, thin your deck a little bit, but there's no prime target that uh, for a water Pokemon. However, we saw that uh, Ultra Ball in hand. And uh, you might just pick up a water Pokemon to discard it this way. Yeah, just to have it at the very least. Worth noting, the Palkia V could actually be relevant in this matchup because it can hit for 200 damage and it hasn't got an ability. So it can actually grow through the Cornerstone Ogre Pond. We do see it get discarded, but it is, uh, I promise you it could have a use. So Earth and Vessel are going to grab two basic energy. Now, worth noting, we alluded to this earlier, Greninja EX is a fighting type. That means it would actually hit Rotom V for weakness and it does have a damage spreading attack. Its second attack does 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. So there is a world if Stefan can take a few prize cards with Shinobi Blade, very possible, must I say, then you can try and bring up Rotom V into the active KO that for two prizes, spread it some more to the bench, three prize turn on deck. So that is a line for Stefan to look to work towards. Yeah, and he will have that support on the bench with the Dust Clubs, potential yes. Dust Nose as well, but exactly. it was only a matter of time and uh, the cards were in his favor. Green JX is finally in play and is able to take knockout after knockout from now on. Oh, nice stretch. He's going to grab the Dust Noir. It is. Ooh. So just while you have the tools, you yeah. might as well evolve. Even if you don't use the ability yet, they will not get knocked yeah, out yeah, from your opponent anyway. Just have them ready on the bench. Don't risk losing your rare candies. Attach a second energy. I think you were just talking about the Mirage Barrage here yeah. and uh, just setting up for the long term there. So and first knockout on the board. Yep, first knockout. Shinobi Blade. We got there eventually. Uh, now, Shinobi Blade is... <laughs> I can't understand this enough. Against the control deck, having Shinobi Blade as your attack turn after turn is so good. Letting you grab any card you like from your deck and put it into your hand. That basically says, right, if, I, if, if you want to try and trap me, I'll grab this. You want to do this? I'll search for this. It's, as a control player, it's not what you want to have happening. So let's leave Leon tries to make life a little bit harder for Stefan. Does take one card from the deck. Didn't actually see what it was, unfortunately. Does take one prize card, and that is over to Leon. Yeah, let's see. He's, he's, he's checking out that discard pile here, see which tools have already been used off the deck. I think I saw three rare candies in total. One, two, and there's the third one. Yep. So there's only one more rare candy in the deck or the prizes um, as far as Leon um, knows that part. So yeah, he could potentially take up that chopper and then say, well, unless you grab that uh, rare candy eventually, that Pokemon is locked there and can't get off the um, active position. Yeah, we do see Nestball going to grab a Snorlax. So we're going to see an Arvin. Now, worth noting, I mentioned about trying to get Rotom V into the active, right? But with Prime Catcher gone, Stefan doesn't play boss's orders. The only other gust he plays is Counter Catcher. Chances are you're not going to be behind on prizes against the control deck unless you use a whole lot of Dust Clops, Dust Noir. Could be possible, I guess. But it's going to make maneuvering around Leon's active a little bit harder, actually. Yeah, and another aspect of the game that we haven't talked enough about yet is how you actually use your bench as a resource, because especially against these control decks we have seen in the prizes that two, uh, three of these accompanying flutes are in the prizes but Stefan doesn't know that and the last thing you want is an extra supporter hitting your bench that you don't want to get locked up there so filling up your bench early on just basically null avoids that item completely yep that's a great point. It's sort of like a catch-22. You want to fill your bench, but you don't want to have any bad Pokemon on the bench so you can Correct. lock them in Snorlax. Now, 
Worth note, Leon looks like is taking from the Arvin a counter catcher and a handheld fan tool. I haven't used this one in a while. Uh, if the Pokemon this card attaches in the active spot and is damaged by an attack, you can move an energy from the attacking Pokemon to one of their bench Pokemon. That's going to make uh, using Shinobi Blade or turn up and turn a lot harder. But all oh, we do see a counter catch in Squawkabee. Now remember, Block is currently live. That Squawkabee cannot retreat, even though it has got a retreat cost of one. And we do see Heroes Cape getting committed to the bench Rotom V. Yeah, you might be thinking, well, there's both Dusclops and Dustmore on the field, and combined, they will take out the Snorlax. However, they're just a second Snorlax ready to go back into yep. the active and prevent any retreating there. So let's see what Stefan does here. I don't think, I can't see a switch at the minute. I think there is an Irida, though. So Irida is very good at, um, well, grabbing switching cards. <laughs> but that handheld fan is really interesting. That's going to make uh, Stefan being able to use Mirage Barrage, love saying that, um, a lot harder. Because every time you attack into it, and then you're going to get returned to the hand. So worth noting. That's going to make life a little bit more in, a little bit more hard. And that's what these control decks do. You know, they just make you ask, que they make you answer questions over the course of the game. It's like, well, you can do this, but I'm going to stop with that. Can you do that? And if I, well, I can't, all of a sudden the game can start to get out of hand. Absolutely. And um, yeah, we talked about ways to retreat your Pokemon. And yeah. uh, we saw that uh, Prime Catcher hitting the discard very early on. Yep. And we have we saw one switch earlier in his hand as well. So there's a switch. However, keep in mind, um, one switch won't be enough to win the game. You no. Typically, at least uh, once you KO the active Snorlaxes, that's only one prize at a time. So you will have to wait and at the right time pick out those big knockouts. Another aspect I want to talk about here is that currently Stefan is at five prizes versus six. He can't use that counter catcher. No. Now, whenever you use either Dustclub or Dustnaw's ability, you give up a prize. However, yeah. You kind of need to use those abilities while not taking a prize yourself because only yeah, then, if you point, give up yeah. two prizes, it would then allow you to use that counter catcher. Speaking of, is he eyeing up the cursed blast on the dust? Or we're, we're debating it, but you're right, yeah, you don't want to be taking prizes. Such a weird way to play the game, right? Like, exactly. so I need you, would have you to, to take prizes, but I don't want to take them. Yeah. <laughs> so you would have to spread that damage. That might be helpful, but once you spread that damage, you might get something into the active. Um, that then allows you to retreat. So that is one extra retreat option that he would have here. There's the first Curse Blast activating. Let's see, 130 damage on which Pokemon? I guess mm, sure. you want to you wanna gust one of these two prizes, right? So worth noting, um, Stefan does play Lost Vacuum, so you can get to 190 damage on the Rotom V and then Lost Vacuum it take the prize cards. If you see Night Stretcher, that grab that Dust Dwarf, you can evolve Dust Clops. You have two uses of Cursed Blast now. Mm -hmm. Doesn't quite get to Rotom yet, though, without the Lost Vacuum. Yep. Here we do see... But that's, a, that's a very good point, because you didn't want to take out the knockouts now anyway, so you can use the Counter Catcher. So parking that damage that goes beyond the HP, but is prevented by that tool, would be amazing to yeah. then, once you grab that Lost Vacuum, but actually, he decides to spread it even further. If we can get to Mirage Blast here, that's a four price. Oh, wait. Yep. Uh, counter Catcher into the Cornerstone. So Whoa. now we can switch. So now we can retreat, I should say. Ah, but then we don't have a second enemy. No, yeah, attach. we can't. Yeah. And an Iron. Okay. Big, strong turn there. Love to see that. Now, we mentioned that Iono is very devastating for Control Decks to play against. So they can say, right, I'm giving you a hand of four. And I'm now taking two prize cards with uh, Shinobi Blade. I can bring up any card I like from my deck. You have to respond fast. Love this swing turn. Let's see what Stefan can do. Absolutely here. Yeah. Very great choice. Keep in mind, there's one more rare candy somewhere in the deck for the Shepherd not to get locked in the active position. Yes. And once these two... Keep in mind, once these two two prizes are off the board, he still has to pick up one prize while mm -hmm. um, not having anything to like gust forward yes. and uh, ignore that block ability. So at that point, it will only be two Snorlax... Um, Act, like one active one on the bench. But worth noting, as we do see a trek and shoot, they're going to grab a night stretcher. Stefan's deck doesn't look that big, you know? No, it looks right. It almost looks like two, uh, maybe three, uh, four I cards. Think it might be like seven to ten, I reckon. Uh, we're looking at it from vertical, it's really hard to gauge. But yeah, it's not the biggest, is what I'm trying to say here. We'll actually probably get a look after the Shinobi Blade, actually. But yeah, worth noting that Stefan's deck isn't the biggest. It looks like Greninja is going to be in the active now, thanks to that retreat. Till Mask Ogre, not Till Mask Ogre, I should say, Cornerstone Ogre Pond is now in the active, no block. So we can see Shinobi Blade being used. That will take a KO, take Stefan two prize cards, and then get to grab any card. Night Stretcher is going to be played here as well. Could this grab a Dusclops? Could grab a Dust Noir? 
<laughs> it's really interesting that 30 damage uh, earlier from the Froki almost played a role. Yes, dangerously close, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, but through that um, bravery charm, it goes beyond the 210 uh, HP anyway. Yeah. So it didn't really matter. So we needed that extra damage to KO it uh, through that. Ooh, I think it was four cards in deck there. One, two, three, four cards. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's not that much actually. Do you get to? Do you get to? Do you have to search? Oh, you may search your deck. I was just wondering. Do you? Yeah. Can you fail to search off Shinobi if you like? It looks like Stefan's opting not to search. Like that heads up play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's uh, down to three prizes at this point. Uh, so Iona would only. Um, so Iona would only, like, yes. have you draw three cards. So it's yeah. less likely you. Um, deck out through Ooh, that. Ooh, not the greatest of pokey stop there. Only going to grab a pearl pad. So I was just thinking, if Stefan's on three prize cards, right? That means you can mirage, barrage, any Snorlax plus Rotom, provided you can get rid of the, the hero escape and win the game. Yep, that is possible. Unless, of course, you are, uh, you would have to first retreat again, um, find a tool, find an energy potentially to attach to that Squawk ability again, and that would be one less energy you can attach. If uh, Leon gets into the active, though, right? Absolutely. So as it stands now, at the very least, but you are right, I'm sure Leon will be doing everything he can to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, and of course, if you attack into that Snorlax, um, that's also Before that, you would also lose an energy back to your bench. Yes, yeah, it makes yeah. it even harder, but of course, at that point, uh, you're one gust away from carrying the Rotom and taking the last two prizes. So let's see how that plays out. I, I also want to see the energy management. I see one energy in the discard, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Five and two active. That's seven energies. That might be all energies, actually. Let me count. Oh, it is. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, there's actually, I mean, Again, I've seen some Parquet decks run eight energies, but it's typically seven. Um, so if he plays Ooh. with that information... Sorry, big turn there. The Penny is going to remove that prior damage off the Rotom V, so there's no route to victory um, on the next, on this turn at the very least. The Snorlax army, as it were. Could even see the Rotom get benched again with the Hero's Cape. I guess it's worth there as well for Stefan. Does play the four copies of Night Stretcher. I'm not, I think a few have been used. But Night Stretcher could get back an energy if he likes. <laughs> I also want to point out the Handheld Felt might actually, if he has a, if he has the option to play a second one, that would be huge because we, if our account was correct and all the energies are in play or in the discard pile, yes, right. The first Handheld Felt puts one energy on the bench. The second one will put the second one on the bench, and then yeah. he wouldn't have left any attacking cost or any yeah. attacker really. Oh, lost vacuum. Okay, off the Irida. So let's have a look. Rare Candy Dust Noir, Curse Blast does 130. Gonna shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Wait, is that game then? Can you Curse Blast onto Rotom? There's 130. Uh, oh no, we're, no, oh, no we're not quite, yeah, we're not quite there. Still with the energy as well. Get a bit excited there, folks, <laughs> I apologize. No, no, it's absolutely, <laughs> especially with these games, like one aspect I loved about this format is how the community took games off stream, right, from the stream and made them into puzzle games for people who haven't yeah. watched the game themselves to just relive that moment and see if it, they can find the path to victory here. So from what it looks like, we're just one energy short of that Mirage yeah, Barrage anyway, we, so that's yeah. not a play, but it would, of course, be huge, huge swing to take for prize at once Ooh, yeah. Yeah, the, oh yeah but at the same time i said that the handheld felt is really annoying to play around uh, yeah, and at so least for now he opts not to discard that because only really the second one would be interesting so there's a water energy hitting the dust noir and that will just be discarded if he chooses to use that ability yeah having the energy on the dust noir is well very bad as it were. Okay, accompanying flute. Any poke? Any basic poke? See what the last two cards are actually. I think it was a Palkia V Star and a Nest Ball. Yeah, okay. that's what he just showed us. So Palkia V Star, funny enough, can get his energies back. Not to good ninja though, but can actually get energies back into play at the very least via Star Portal. Yeah, but we would need Ooh. two turns to evolve it into There's that. There's every. Okay, so what have we got? We've got I don't know. Sw uh oh, switch and lost vacuum. They're going to get discarded. They would, I think, have been very good for Stefan to use. I think only plays two copies of switch. No, one copy of one switch. Copy We've of seen switch. it that already. It. It's gone. So that means now any sort of um, swapping into the active and block could be disastrous. Squawker Billy could be in trouble here. Yeah, uh, it was nice to use Squawk and uh, Seize in the first turn. However, it's not the perfect starter against those no. uh, control decks. You would probably prefer not to play it at all. Uh, it has one less Pokemon to be blocked in the active. This position. gets a counter catch. That's going to be huge. Oh, well, it doesn't get anything, actually. All sent straight to the discard pile. So 
instant charge. So we can still at the very least see an iron O from Steph that's gonna reset the deck a little bit. And we see another Shinobi Blades go down to one prize card. This Iono can actually be really impactful, right? Because if, if this Iono sticks and Leon can't, you know, stop Shinobi Blade again, he could just win. I mean, Stefan can win just on prize cards, right? Takes one now off Shinobi Blade. Goodness. And then there's only one attack away from winning the yeah, whole game. Exactly. So, whoa, this is a close one here. Here we go. Okay, there's the Iron. We had to see that, right? We can't be letting any Chi Yu EX shenanigans come out and lose the game. So especially, gonna see especially that. because you draw into that um, Palkia Vista. Yep. Your last I your last card was an item, so that could have been yes. discarded as well with Misfortune Sisters, and then you wouldn't have any card to draw into. So it was kind of required to draw. Uh, Use that support of Iono here to just get more cards yeah. back into your deck. And uh, it also really helps with both the um, extra cards from the Rotom that he draws as well. Because, oh, however, do you see that counter catcher in Leon's hand? Oh, did you join it off the, did you join it off the Iono? Yep, there it oh, is. Oh, it's a golden one as well. That could... Oh, I think it's really hard to play around that. He also has yeah. a Misfortune Sisters here. Okay, just look at the whole deck, I think. Whoop. Uh, there's the ultra ball. Get rid of that. Let's shuffle them up. Shuffle and them I up. honestly, at this point, don't see any way around that counter yep. catcher play. That's going to be tough. Okay, this squawker Billy could be locked here thanks to that. Oh, and there's the concession. Yep, yep. yep. Wow, what a game there from that looked like that could go either way for so long, though, didn't it, Barris? Like honestly, Stefan was just one attack away from winning, but Leon does take our game one here and position. Yeah. Because it could have been the the play that there's maybe two switches and it would have an extra point, but now. Going into that, of course, there's the rare chance that it might have been prized, but Leon has a better understanding that there might be only one switch and he can play around that. But it already looks a little bit better with a better starter. Leon once again says, hey, I want to use my supporter cards as early as possible. So I'm absolutely happy for you to go first. And it's yes. really interesting to see how this plays out. So we're going to leave the origin for you, Palky. If he didn't see that in game one, how they got them both down here and a pass. Okay, let's see what Leon can do. We didn't actually get to see those, those accompanying flutes in the last game, because three of them are prized. We could see this is a prime time to use them here. We know what a Pokemon in the deck, right? So let's see what we can do. Heavy ball here, actually. This heavy, heavy ball, ball is one of my favorite items. Yeah, it's you can really talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> it not only gets you a basic Pokemon out of your prizes, but you see players taking note. It's like the easiest way to price check, right? You can check what is in my prizes, take note, and you know for the rest of the game, which tools do I have, which items do I have, which supporters do I have. So it's a really great item here, especially in the early turns, even if it doesn't give you any value, any basic Pokemon, you still get the knowledge of what is priced, and it's way easier to look at your prizes and take note than going through your whole deck trying to figure out what is priced. And worth noting as well in a control deck, typically you're not taking prize cards, so you yep. need to know what they are because chances are outside of any sneaky dust noir shenanigans, if you did see actually, funnily enough, you're not going to take them. So the cornerstone Ogre Pond did get liberated. I'm sure uh, Leon probably won't be putting that down again. Not the most useful in this matchup, but. Another aspect is like we saw um, Froki not hitting the bench turn one. I think that would have been a prime target here. It would be really nice to actually see um, Froki getting into uh, getting into play so that eventually you can play the rare candy and evolve it. But it's not here yet, which just gives you, which basically gives Leon at least one extra turn to discard those rare candies and make it harder to evolve. Yes, no, you're 100% correct. Stefan was really able to get those. Um, does clops, does squads, does and does skulls realistically in play really fast, and this gives Leon time to try and get rid of those resources before you get. Because let's not make, make no mistake about it. If game one really well for Stefan, right? Um, if this game doesn't go really well across that game plan, this might be a lot more of a well, a bit more of an easier game for Leon. There, Poke Gear has been played. Look at top seven cards of your deck and grab any supporter. Let's see. I didn't quite actually get to see what those seven were. There's a penny. I'm going to grab the Penny. Worth noting, did actually prize two copies of Penny. These um, Snorlax decks love to Penny loop over and over to remove damage. You saw how impactful it was in game one. So only having access to two makes it a little bit harder. Absolutely, especially with that Dust Noir ability, being able to spread damage. And you were just hyping up that potential Mirage Barrage, right? Yeah. But the only way it really works is if damage sticks for a longer time and yes. sets up that turn, at yep. least with like the slow pace of setting up those energies. And Penny is just there ready to pick up any damaged Pokemon. The other thing I want to say is that uh, Rotom is an amazing Pokemon to have on the bench. You don't really want to have it active, give up yeah. two, uh, yeah. prizes. And he doesn't really have a lot of options to retreat. He has free yeah. energies, but you need to draw into them to um, retreat that Rotom. So what might look like a desperation move using that penny on a 
totally like full HP Rotom just helped him to get it out of the active and get that Snorlax ready as well. Yeah, and we do see as Instant Charge was used, Stefan slammed that Iodo and said those cards are going straight to the bottom. So, first hand of six for both players. Stefan going to start the turn off, well, after the Iona with the Nest Ball. Now, if we are going to maybe see a Palkia V-Star action, we need to actually get some more bench Pokemon to actually start taking some big subspace wilds KOs. We might not. We could actually see the Hydro Break being used. We saw this get used a lot back in the day against the Mewtwo V Unions. It does 200 damage flat, and it hasn't got an ability. So we could also see that. Nest Ball for now, though, is going to grab the Skull. Yeah. Now, you might be thinking, how do I approach this matchup best? I don't want to have anything stuck in the active position. Yeah. How about I just don't bench anything that I don't want to have active? You might think... But then the accompanying fluid that we talked about yes. earlier didn't play a huge role in the first game. But now, with so much bench space open, it's only a matter of time until uh, Leon finds those items and can potentially find some of those supporting Pokemon. So if Stefan has a way to discard them early on, that would be amazing. Yeah, so it looks like Stefan's going to end the turn there with a wall the region. Don't get said that one too often. Then you search your deck for a stadium and pop in it in your hand. So you're right, three bench slots open. A crumpling flute could be huge here. Let you look at the top five cards of your opponent's deck. And then any... Oh, we're going to see an airy first of all, though. I apologize. Look at your opponent's hand, discard two items. That's a miss. But we did see it miss in game one as well. I have to say, like, Stefan just finds this way to keep his eye, like yeah, all the yeah. items off his hands. They were like, airy missed twice now. We saw Misfortune Sisters at the beginning of the game um, despite having so many like items in your deck like it just managed to keep them all off and uh, miss those early hits here especially but yeah for the control deck it's just going to be another free course yep accompanying fan to the active as well um, that company fan is so huge by the way here we are going to see pokey stop oh nice stretcher dust noir and it oh not the greatest of pokey stop there well, actually, not a lot for Stefan to do. It has an energy, so we could see a hydro break, but that would move the energy off. That's the problem with that. Mm. So, could see a water. I mean, don't, we don't want to see a water. Night stretch is being eyed up. So we could grab Dust Noir back. Curse Blast is, well, 130 damage. It isn't quite enough to get through a Snorlax on its own, which is unfortunate, but. Mm. It's actually like use any item you can while you can because they might eventually be gone. And yes, there's the target with the dust clubs. The energy won't be of any use really, so it, it just sticks there and it's gone. But yeah, that's two on the active, one on dust clubs, one in the discard pile. That is four energies. So there's three more energies that um, Stefan can play around with. Keep in mind this time he might choose the route of um, going that with the Palkia and the late game Palkia V Star just. Uh, yep start portaling free energies back into play might be huge yeah really could so we are going to see so there was a hydro break ko on the snorlax and then we are going to see arvin being played here then you grab an item and a tool card that company and fan being <laughs> oh here we go here we it go looks time. like leon's going to get time. the flute out of his back pocket so love to see this now a company and flute let you look at the top five cards of your opponent's deck any basic pokemon fine you can put straight into play oh leon you need miss. to get some more flute lessons there my friend that was a miss <laughs> few more feud lessons for sure absolutely another miss no basic pokemon of course for leon the best thing that could have happened was maybe a squawkabilly yep maybe that uh Fezendipity, um or even that mew ex could also be very huge there to just lock it in the active position that would have been and the, 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 what's so unfair when you play against these norlax decks is you can think well i'm not going to put anything down but they can go a coupling flute let's say it was grab squawkabilly again or Fezendipity or mew yet and then they counter catch you and it's like Oh, there was not much I could have done about that, but this yep. is where we are. But luckily, well, lucky for Stefan, unluckily for Leon, that accompanying flute was a miss. Yeah, let's see. I mean, he, he just sets up his board. There's very little, like, he's not planning to attack. There's one energy which might allow him to retweet if he ever needs to. Um, the hero's cape as well for some extra HP. And we see another um, free cards. Yep, the instant charge there from Rotom. So let's see what Stefan can do. Nest ball being played. Okay, let's see what we can do here. That pheasant dippity at the bottom of the deck. That's where you want to be <laughs> when your opponent's playing a company of flutes. You stay right there, Fez. <laughs> There's like Greninja. I mean, Greninja. I mean, you wish you could get Greninja and play from a Nest ball. Froki is going to get taken from the Nest ball. Yeah, at least not the Greninja. Yes, Radiant Greninja would have been one target, but uh, it didn't really do too well in the first uh, game. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really hit hard enough against those decks, and yeah. uh, they never really stick enough damage, so you can't take out, um, take Pokemon out there either. So, um, hmm. and it can be a block target as well, right? It's not the greatest Pokemon. Here we do see Pokestop triple Ooh. hitter. Let's go. Yeah, but it's actually 
You don't want the rare candy right now because you just showed your opponent. Oh, true. That you have a rare candy and he might use the area to discard. However, on the other hand, he managed to get Squawkabilly and Mewdiax yep. both discarded here, so they're no longer targets of accompanying flutes. And another nest ball. He just plays, as I said, play the items as you can because they might be discarded at any point throughout the game. Yep, and as you say, get the you want to get your bench as many well good Pokemon as possible. So Froki is good right now, can evolve up, can attack. Duskull can evolve up, Curse Blast out of there. Dust Clops can do that. The only liability right now is that second power key of the I feel. You don't really want to have two. Yeah, and um, yeah, there's the information of the rare candy in hand. But now Leon has the hard decision, knowing that there's a rare candy. Do I play the Airy, get rid of the one in hand? But that's the first appearance of a. Oh, a second energy. Oh, that's so mean. So we do see the soul space well for KO. 60 plus 20 for each bench Pokemon in play. Handheld fan there would activate. That's going to put two energy on that uh, Dust Noir. Worth knowing that attack requires two Psychic, so that's not going to get used anytime soon. But Absolutely. But that's, I mean, um, we talked about the interaction between using uh, Palkia V-Star's attack versus Palkia V's attack. And uh, yep. that, that only really comes into effect against that Ogre Pond, right? Yes. So yes. Yeah, for sure. um, you can, un until the Ogre Pond hits the field, you can just yeah. attack with the subspace as well the whole time. And then you have your second Palkia V ready on the bench. So you can use Star Portal, charge that right up. And yes, there's two energies on Dusk War, but just use the ability. Yeah. They get discarded and they're ready for Star Portal, basically. Yeah, you're right. And interesting, I just realized, if you could use Dusk uh, Noir, get an engine disc up and play some damage. You can then star portal onto Froki, evolve up, uh, Mirage, Bla uh, Mirage, Mirage Barrage <laughs> is now live. But it's like Poke Gear did hit a Misfortune Sisters. I want to see a Mirage Barrage this game. That would be huge, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, to finish up the point I started earlier, like yes. he knows that there's a rare candy in hand, right? Yeah, you would uh, love that to hit an area, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. L uh, hit the area. But then at the same time, there's still three more in the deck. You have the Pokestop, you have True. more drawing tools as yeah, well. So point. he has the option here. Of course, it's always better to discard the one you know of, but if you don't have the area... Ooh. Ultra Ball, Lost Vacuum's actually really big because we, well, we just played two copies, Stefan, but we saw Lost Vacuum could have removed Hero's Cape off the Rotom in the last game, wasn't able to. So that's one Lost Vacuum gone. Yeah, but uh, there's a Reckon in hand, and, and I guess if you're Leon, you just want to make sure that you um, just hope that he has a Reckon, but not the Gringer yet. Because I don't think uh, in a while Leon had access to see which cards Stefan had in his hand here no. so th maybe this is this is just what we talked about a second ago that now he can use dust Nord's ability get those water energies in disco pile use star portal and get that uh, active attacker ready as well could so do this that. time could yeah you're gonna say i could do that it's perfectly fine um counter it's just that's the problem with control deck so you can see what stefan's trying to do and leon's like no can't do that you can use your star portal to get hydro break going but i know you don't want energy there you wanted to be on your good ninja but i'm not letting you Wait, put them there i don't want to take too much away but oh, yeah. we we just saw in the sand he had the wreck and he, he has the greninja and he also has the prime catcher oh goodness gracious i already me. i already see one energy in the discard pile two are on the dust nor so maybe this is the free price turn we talked about mirage barrage is 120 though right so p with the hero's cape, it's actually still outside of range. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the hero's cape gives it 290, and, and with the lost, lost vacuum, vacuum already gone. gone. So, I mean, it, the dream is still alive. If you can lost vacuum, prime catcher, star portal, it's still possible. Let's see what picks up. Switch. We will go with the nest ball and the uh, I don't know. I think we also have to point out that mist energy would actually prevent effects of attacks, right? So that would also negate that damage onto the bench? Uh, no, because it's still damage. It says no. Yeah, so it's still be placing. It's still it's doing damage, not damage counter. So you should still be okay. Also, if it's in the active, it's definitely going to still take damage. So. That's true. That's true. So it looks like oh, we saw Hisuian Heavy Ball. We're going to grab Dust uh, Dust Clot. Uh, sorry, Dust Skull. We'll get there eventually. So worth noting now, a complete flute, no longer no longer a thing. Oh yeah, I I need to double check this one. Mist energy prevent all effects of attacks. Mirage Barrage has no damage. It is an effect of the attack, right? That would place damage. It's not about whether it's damage counters or um, actual damage. So that would be interesting to know uh, whether this would affect it or not and would uh, prevent that damage onto the bench. But for now, we just see another subspace well and another KO. So it looks like, yep, yeah, gonna see a subspace well, sort of switch to get there. That's the only copy of switch though. So that switch is gone. 
Mm. All right, this starts to look a bit. <laughs> that's got another counter catcher though. So you can <laughs> and that's the thing about these stall out decks, right? It's like you can get out of the active once and play hot potato, but it's like, how often can you do that? I'm not sure. Now, I hyped up the moment that there was both the Red Candy and the Greninja Yax in hand. You might be thinking, why has he not evolved while he can? And I think the huge point that you brought up is he might want to use. Oh, Ari was just discarded? Yeah, Ari was discarded off the Pokestop. Sorry, just didn't swap you there, but carry on. Yeah, sorry, I just want to say, um, we pointed this out earlier, Star Portal only allows you to mm. attach energies to your um, water Pokemon. So if you yes. evolve it, you no longer have that option. Um, and this only really comes into effect if you want to use Mirage Barrage. Beca because otherwise, like Shinobi Blade, you just need one water energy. You don't need like Star Portal to uh, basically power that up. So this might be a play where he's like, it also gives your opponent a false sense of security. Where it's like, hey, my opponent has a rare candy, but he hasn't evolved it, despite me having the option to area it away. So maybe, um, maybe that yeah. will actually... Um, let Leon think mm. that it would not uh, have a Greninja EX in hand. Yeah, no, that's a really interesting point, actually. It's, it's really awkward, right? You'd love to be able to get the Greninja into play as soon as possible. But you're right, because you, then you stop the Star Portal shenanigans. So, yeah, so we're up there. Um, oh, they're going to grab the Night Stretcher and that Bravery Charm. Going to make a brave Snorlax, I would imagine. There it's come. Goodness gracious, not what you want to be seeing, all these Snorlaxes, they just won't go away, Marish. You've got a counter catcher, I told, as I told you, this Palkia V, you didn't need that, but <laughs> that's the problem against these Snorlax decks. If you lead a Pokemon you don't want, it, chances are you can't get rid of it. <laughs> Absolutely here, and uh, there's, however, there's still the attack. You can use your visa. I mean, you now have to pick your battles, right? Do you want to power up your Polka V, or do you ev eventually want to power up that? Um oh wait, hold on a second. Did you say he had Prime Catcher in hand? Yes. So this is not this is free prize turn here then, right? Because you you can. Oh, hasn't got enough energy in the discard pile, actually, right? Hold on. So he has one in the discard pile. He yeah, would so have to use the Dust Noir to get two more. Yeah, so if you can Dust Noir, Curse Blast, Rotom, get Rotom into the active, um, then Mirage Barrage, KO Rotom in the active, plus a Snorlax on the bench. That's three prize cards. Stefan actually has three prize cards remaining. That should get you there, right? Wait, how do you get... Oh, okay, he puts oh, wait, the damage put, put on, on the Snorlax. Snorlax anyway. Okay, let's see. You can take out both. So here's, here's a star portal. He's going into that Froki, so you might yeah, evolve okay. that, and we might finally see that Mirage Barrage that we talked about for so long. Okay. There's Prime Catcher. Lost Vacuum. Night Stretcher. Ooh. Oh, or you could use Curse Blast again to get the prior damage. Mirage Barrage would take three prize cards, okay, an active Rotom and a bench Snorlax. And Stefan Ivanov takes game two here in our round four feature match. And we finally got the same. Yeah, scary. And then use them in the right moment. Uh, but at the same time, I guess Stefan also had luck on his side when neither of the accompanying flutes or yeah. early on Ares really hit anything. And worth noting, Stefan did prize that score could be in pretty love to see that. Get that straight in the prize cards. Now, you can have one Palkia V in play, that's fine. We can do that. We saw Palkia V style being very helpful. You don't want to really have a couple more. So let's see. Earth and Vessel on the discard. I like Radio Green Seek. You don't want that in play. That is <laughs> that is a Snorlax uh, target right there. So get that gone. Um, and Earth and Vessel are going to grab two copies of basic energy. Of course, it'll be water. I mean, the fewer Pokemon Stefan uh, has to go through, um, before taking his prizes or before uh, Leon runs out of Pokemon, the faster he can actually seal up this game. So that could yep. be really helpful. However, we see one Mimikyu active um, and we see one Snorlax in hand. So that's at least two turns for Leon to pick up more Pokemon and make it really hard for Stefan to go through all the decks with the remaining time of roughly six minutes. And you see, especially in these game free scenarios, players pick up their pace a little bit more, play it play at a higher face, get more cards into Ooh, play. A company in flute. Oh, hey, I mean, to be fair, you might have actually done... St oh, he opted not to, but of course, yeah. Like, yes. oh, you want them ones? No. Put them back in the deck. <laughs> Love to see that. Yeah, I mean, he really wanted to target those support Pokemon, but yes. getting... Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just getting more helpful Pokemon for Stefan in the field? No, that, that that's... We, we shuffle them right back into the deck. <laughs> so now he gets his first deck search here. Um, Looks into nest balling. Yeah, so we're going to see nest ball. We're going to do a little prize check at the very least and just work out, you know, how many Storlax do I have available? Because worth noting that Mimikyu, I mean, to be fair, it does a good job against Palkia V, but not very good against Dust Clops or Dust Noir. Not very good 
against, uh, well, just Dev2, really. That's the problem with Mimikyu now. You can't just, before with the Snow Death, you could use Mimikyu a lot more, but now that Dust is involved, it's not the best of walls. Yeah, it's interesting to see that. I mean, he has one Snorlax in hand, uh, one Rotom hits the field as well, so he has Snorlax and Rotom ready. This is going to be really rough to actually go through because you also need different attackers or different setups to go through the Snorlax, go through um, that Mimikyu and the Rotom to pick them up all equally. At the same time, however, um, I would love to see what Stefan goes for his second turn um, playoff here. And keep in mind, Subspace Well does more damage to more bench Pokemon you have. So yeah. Leon might actually opt not to fully bench early on to just prevent that damage and maybe prevent a KO on a Rotom early on. It looks like that Pokey gear being played. They're going to up the Misfortune scissors. Now, we've seen this hasn't been terribly successful here. Well, to be fair, they did get rid of the switch in the. Um, uh, and the Lost Vacuum in game one, so... But let's see what this does here. I don't think it has many options for other supporter cards, so... Misfortune says, then you look at the top five cards of your deck... Oh, well, your opponent's deck, I should say, and discard any items you find there. So, if dream a scenario, getting rid of Switch and Prime Catcher would be huge. Here we go, one, two, there's that Froakie again. Ooh, Night Stretcher, Nest Ball, and Buddy Buddy Pot. Ooh, particularly good cards that Stefan would want there, actually. Yeah, free items, great hit, of course, thinning out the deck as well. However, we talked about how hard it is for a control deck to actually go through all of Stefan's deck in the remaining time. Yes. Um, so it might not be as huge of a factor. It might just help him uh, a little bit or make it harder for Stefan to seal up this game. Nope, there's Lost Vacuum, there goes that hero's cape. <laughs> Not a very heroic weapon be anymore. Okay. Yeah, we've actually seen how it was picked up with uh, Penny multiple times, so this yep. way it's actually gone. It can't be yep. completely <laughs> out of the game. Yeah, that's going to stay in that Lost Zone. There we go. Greninja going to come down here as well by a Night Stretcher, draw two from Concealed Cards. So let's let's another energy can be attached to Subspace as well. However, Mimikyu won't care, right? No, nope, Mimikyu will not be taking any damage from that sort of space. Well, that is that is for sure. But can retreat now, then use Star Portal to get attackers, well, get energy onto somewhere else. Um, here we do see the Pokey stop. This card top three, Nest Ball, Nair Candy, or almost a triple hitter. But you could argue having Dust Clops in the discard pile is nice because Nice Stretch just plucks it straight out when you want it, right? Mm -hmm. So. There's the Nest Ball to Ooh. potentially get the Froakie, but he decides... Oh, okay, there's the Nest Ball. He could have alternatively also used the Ultra Ball to uh, discard an extra water energy and have it ready in the discard pile. But we see the Nest Ball for... Um, for the Froakie. Yep. I'm just thinking, we saw Ultra Ball and Rare Candy, right? We could see Rare Candy, Dusk uh, Noir, Cursed Blast, get rid of Mimikyu, and now Subspace Well has free reign to attack whatever it likes. Yeah, if... If Stefan has a full bench, that would be 160 plus whatever Leon adds to that. Grinch well, actually discarded here. Yeah, and we do see this one. Okay, so we are. Maybe Stefan's going to up a curse blast this turn. I imagine it probably goes into the. Well, I assume it goes into the Mimikyu. But let's see what happens after that. Yeah, he only has three bench Pokemon left after that, so Subspace World's damage is limited. True, that's a good point, yeah, because you take out another yeah. Pokemon, so there's only one bench Pokemon on Leon's side. So quick math is 60 and a total of four benched, uh, so 140, and I don't think that's enough for either of these two no, Pokemon. It's not. Uh, so he won't be able to take another knockout and, like, sticking damage, I guess, it forces Leon to use another Penny. Yes, it forces them to start playing Penny, which means they're not playing Eri. They're not okay. playing Misfortune Sisters, which is really nice. So you could argue, even though it's not the greatest, it at least forces them to play Penny, which means your resources should be safe. Are we going to yep. see a Moonlight Shuriken? Oh, no, we're going to see Star Portal, Star Portal onto the Palkia. I don't mind that, actually, because that can be a liability. We know that. Oh, but we can see a retreat into the Hydro Break. That does 200, and that does KO Rotom V. All of a sudden, Leon has one Pokemon left in play. Yeah, and I talked early on how, like, he needs more bench Pokemon to make sure, but there's just another Snorlax in hand. We saw another Nest Ball in hand, so he can fill up that bench right away and prevent... Uh, at least losing all his Pokemon. Um, so yeah, a Nest Ball, potentially get another Rotom into play, but keep in mind, Stefan already down to three prizes. Really is, um, as time does keep ticking on. As we do see the Nest Ball being played, let's have a little quick discussion about the time rules in case you don't know. So let's say the timer does get called on Leon's side. There will then be three, each player, there'll be three additional turns. If the game does not conclude naturally in those three turns, this game three does not class as finishing. So let's say this game was to go to time and there'd be no natural conclusion, this round would end in a tie because both players have 
one one game. Yeah, and in case you're wondering what does three more turns mean, it's yes. actually we talked about Leon being it, it being Leon's turn, so that would be what we consider turn zero. So he finishes turn and then three more turns, which means yes. it goes over to Stefan once, back to Leon, and then Stefan one more time. Yes. So with time being very close, I think the judges will confirm when the time is actually over. Yep. Uh, we see a dice with two on the board. I do wonder if time was already called and this yeah. is already the second turn. Potentially, usually players pick dices and then turn them around every single turn to indicate. Uh, however, that dice was not turned around, so maybe it is not yeah, the second turn. Yet. It was just off a dice roll, probably. So yep. we'll get confirmation exactly when time has been called, but let's just assume the time was, the timer was correct. This could be Stefan turn one. Okay, Mimikyu is in the active. Palki of E cannot, do around, cannot get around that, unfortunately. So let's see what Stefan can do. Does the question is, do you have any tool to get around that Mimikyu in the active position? You're already ahead in prizes, so you only have three. You can't really use a counter catcher here. I, have we seen the prime catcher? No. There is still a route, right? What you'd have to do is curse blast the Mimikyu and then just mirage barrage to... Oh, it's going to be really hard to mirage barrage now, though, because... And you also don't have, any, yeah. you don't have any curse blast set up. You can't really yeah, so you'd this have turn to, either. Yes, yeah, so you'd have to take the turn off to get that. I mean, Dust Knight is going to be essential for this, but actually, yeah, now that well, Mirage Barrage has been used, worth actually noting, the text on Hydro Break, you don't get to see it too often on the Palkia, it actually can't attack this turn unless it switches around, so this Palkia can't even attack it was, well, right now anyway, so that's something to keep an eye on. Yeah, good point. Uh, so it doesn't really matter too much if he gets rid of the Mimikyu this turn or not. He can yes. buy himself another turn. Don't see any other attacker ready, I guess. You could, if you find a route to evolve the Greninja, um, you could potentially attack with that this turn, or not into the Mimikyu, so you would need that. I mean, we've seen Irida. Did we see a supporter plate this turn yet? No. no we didn't. So you could Irida into that Prime Catcher, actually, but he first chooses to draw two more cards with that Concealed Card ability. So let's see what happens here. Do we see Duskwall? We'd love yeah. to see that in play last turn. Irida there. Could obviously, Counter Catcher, that's not live. <laughs> we won't be using that. <coughs> Less There's see. the Arita, which can get you. I mean, I guess you want to keep that for one more turn, potentially, to use it when you can. But here, get an extra water Pokemon and an item out of your deck. So this could access the Prime Catcher, but he's skipping through that. Oh, going back right there. So there's the Prime Catcher, and maybe no target for the water Pokemon. Ooh, that's another option, of course. Ooh, if you evolve it, okay. that effect of not being able to attack goes away, so you could use yeah. Subspace as well. Yep. But again, you still need to find a way around that Mimikyu. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because Subspace wants to Mimikyu, it doesn't mean it's going to do anything, but yeah, you're right. So, interesting, interesting. There is the Prime Catcher, though. I guess we could see maybe Rare Candy evolves Shinobi Blade as well. Take care of a Snorlax, let's go down to two. I don't think he has all the pieces in hand yet, though. Oh, that's deck, deck, isn't it? Yeah, that's the deck. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that would be a nice hand to have, of Yeah, course, that would be. Uh, yeah, you also kind of, if you get the Prime Catcher out of deck, you you make yourself vulnerable for another area play unless you use it this turn. So let's see what, what he has in mind here. Um, and if, the other problem is, if he Prime Catches a Snorlax, right? Yeah. Right now, he doesn't really have a way to then go back into the active position. Nothing no. can really retreat. Oh, well, oh, there's with a switch. The switch. <laughs> that gets you there. I at the spoke very too least. soon, yes. <laughs> So okay. looking through the discard pile from Leon once more as well. Um, and yeah, I guess now with Prime Catcher and Switch, you might have a way to attack this turn as well. However, you still need two prizes. Um, you have, I guess if you pick out, okay, if you knock out a Snorlax now, right? And then have Dust Snow ready to pick the Mimikyu up next turn. Mm -hmm. And then KO the Snorlax, you would get your free prize that yep. you need. That is true. Okay, so let's see. This will, this will give us a little bit of clarity. So we're going to see the retreat for two. The skull in the active. Prime catcher into a Snorlax, of course. That's going to bring Palkia V back. Evolve, attach energy. Evolve, attach energy, so space well. And that will be a KO. Okay. I mean, there was one way around not having to use both Prime catcher and switch where you just manually retreat and yes. then use the switch so you keep your prime catcher uh you keep your switch in hand mm -hmm. this way and still get to attack um so yeah now i think the the route to victory here and we see a second dice hit the field and this might indicate that leon is currently in the second turn which yes. gives stefan one, one, one more, turn. more turn right and that might be the route i talked about where he takes the mimic you out i guess yep. one potential play could be 
get Mimikyu off the board with a, uh, with a penny. Yep, that and would then work. And then put down the Snorlax. Yeah, any there. Pokemon that's got more than 100 and, well, 30 HP, right? That's all we need. <laughs> um, yeah, because Mimikyu just gets Cursed Blast. What's in that hand? Bravery Charm, does that... Does, ooh, does Bravery Charm push the Snorlax outside of range of Sus Base as well? Probably does, right? Here we are going to see Pokestop. That's a... Ooh, a company and Flute. Can't even play Bench. that right now. Oh. Okay, so you see Poke Gear. Okay. Currently, it all comes down to this moment. Like yeah, we're literally the in the last turns of the game, or the second penultimate turn here. Um, I think if if this was already the third turn, then there would be no point to play on. Um, so we have to assume that there's one more turn for Stefan. And he, you see him just sitting back, watching the action happening, uh, and then ready to strike and potentially take the last two prizes. Okay, so Pokey Gear. We see bosses. Boss swords is. Not bad, but we know switches in hand actually, and uh, Leon knows the switches in hand because it got Pokey stopped <laughs> into the hand, right? So you know that it wasn't an Eri in that uh, top seven. There was there Arvin Boss? No, just Arvin and Boss. Okay. Yeah, so I think it's going to be Arvin. So okay. I'm going to grab a tool card and an item, which also means the switch in Stefan's hand is safe for this turn. Yes, that is correct. So that switch isn't going to go anywhere. Which items are you looking for? So now that's what I'm trying to work out. I mean, has a bravery charm in hand. Still, it is going to grab one by the looks of it. Hero's Cape's gone. A couple of, uh, not a couple of, so handheld fan doesn't really do much. One's in hand anyway. So I think the item is probably the key thing here, right? Um, looks like a nest ball to get an ogre pond into play. I mean, it's got the most HP, right? That's the, <laughs> just, that's what it comes to. It only has 210, but it's the tankiest thing. Because the thing is, with the subspace swell, it's capped. Because if you don't bench any Pokemon, the damage of subspace swell is really capped right now, right? Yeah. Currently, with two benched, you just about hit 200. So it, that's short of the damage you would need. So he gets the Bravery Charm and the Nest Ball and is considering to play down the Ogopon or not. But there we see it. Nest Ball played, Ogopon on the bench. Let's see if Leon finds a way out of losing this game. I think it's basically, yeah. it's Stefan's game to win. Yes. From this point on, it's either a tie or Stefan finds all the pieces and wins this game. So the question is, can Leon, I mean, running away with a tie against Stefan is amazing, right? Yeah. would rather tie here than lose, of course. So uh, the question is just, is this Stefan's game to win and how does he find the remaining pieces to get there? Is that the Bravery Charm in hand as well? So that can, um, well, increase HP. We love that. We love to see that. Going to go on to Snorlax. So yeah, this is it. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is what I like. This has been a really good feature match so far. It hasn't been the normal control. There's so many intricacies here. I think Bravery Charm on Pokemon just feels safe, right? Like, yeah, I think I, I don't see a reason not to put it there. If this is, if we think this is Stefan's last turn. We're on active. So that's got 120 HP, right? That's um, Mimikyu. Okay, Ooh. let's see what Stefan can do. What do we see in that hand? The uh, Ultra Ball, Counter Catcher. Um, I don't gosh. see uh, a rare candy there. No, is po Pokestop is still in play. Oh, not going to do it on a Poke stuff, are we? Goodness gracious. Okay. Let's have a look. What's that discard power? A lot of energy. Star Portal has been used. So the Ogre Pond is actually quite interesting, right? Because now, if they take out the Mimikyu, you can just promote, promote uh, Ogre yeah. Pond, and you're somewhat safe from the attack. So you would have to find a way to KO both the Mimikyu and find a Gusting Way, which I don't think he has left in the stack because the Prime Catcher's gone, he doesn't play a boss, and Counter Catcher's not active either. No. So there's no, no way really to target that uh, Snorlax once the Ogre Pond is in the active position, and Leon might have just found a way to prevent that, and um, mm. I, I wonder if two Curse Blasts could change the outcome here, but he's still short of rare candies. I mean, they're in the deck, and uh, Pokestop will probably come into effect at the end of this game. Um, so yeah, let's just watch how they play it out here, and if he finds a way to take those knockouts. Uh, at the same time, that's... Wait, there is... Ogapon has 210 HP, right? Yes. Two Curse Blasts from Dust Norse, enough to pick it up? Yeah. Get your last yeah, two cards. That's also one way to get there. <laughs> yeah. So if you find, yeah. I mean, you need two Great rare point. candies and both your dust norse. Yes. Um, and if you think about it, the the tool 
the bravery charm didn't even change that math. No, it was it up to 260, which is still enough. Ooh, for ultra ball, not rare candy. I think we not already have. We need rare candy, right? Doesn't have an energy in oh, hand either to use no. concealed cards, so it gets tricky from this point on. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a there's a lost vacuum and a second poker stop in hand, so you can discard his own stadium, play a stadium, and use that again. Yes, and get two. two yeah, well, another another roll. Yeah. Goodness gracious me, <laughs> I think. I think There's also first, trekking shoe. Which yeah, trekking shoes as well. For here. So it looks like we are going to see lost vacuum. I imagine he said he's going to try and get another roll of the pokey stop here. Let's see. I think, funnily enough, Switch, is, you don't see this very often against Control Deck, is actually the worst card right here because <laughs> Nefar <laughs> needs to win exactly on this turn. So, Lost Vacuum is going to get rid of the stage room. There we go. Another poke. We want to see Rare Candies here realistically. Any Rare Candies? Here we go. Nest Ball. Rare Candy! Okay, that, that's one part of the puzzle. Oh, we still have trekking shoes. <laughs> oh, boy. It's not going to be trekking shoes for game, is it, folks? Wait, but he he needs a second dust nor somewhere as well. He has, he has, he has the ultra, ultra ball that, in hand. Oh, we won't have enough deck. cards to discard, actually, though, if he was to play the trekking shoes. Oh, we might we might be... Oh, mm. oh goodness. Oh, goodness. What's, what? Okay, yeah, so he's, he's going Boston. for that route, so he now needs to find a way, but what could tracking shoe possibly get you that gets you both pieces? <sighs> um, I wish I knew. <laughs> he, is, is Mu EX still in play? Could he? Yeah, I got discarded after Pokestar. He has. You could Night Stretcher Ooh. for the Mu actually then. Oh, okay. Another attack. Luna, Saluna. But needs one more in it. That attacks ah, one. <laughs> No, Leon has still four prizes. And I don't oh, think sorry. Yeah, I was looking at Stefan. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was looking there as well. I was like, nope. Uh, he, mm. Okay, well, here comes the trekking the deck, shoes. I suppose. Here comes the trekking shoes at the very least. Here we go. Oh, we took it. What was it? What was it? Oh, oh no. of course. Hasn't played support yet. The turn continues. But it's two more cards. I oh, mean, yeah, it's only two. Yeah, that's a good point. Night Stretcher, Rack Handy would be insane here. It would get him Ooh. the exact two pieces. Oh, but it was Pokey stopping something. We see a discard part. I I don't think it was yet. And that might be it. That's going to be it. So both players fist. It was an Iono and a Pokey stop. As that one's going to end in a tie.